So we've conquered Greece and Macedon and burnt Carthage to the ground. But there's one thing I really can't abide, besides you watching and not subscribing, and that is barbarians at the gates, on our doorstep, with their weird gods and surprisingly good metalworking. So today, we're seeing if we can conquer the barbarians at our gates. Can we bring Roman civilization to these savage lands? Stay tuned to find out. And here we are back as Rome, guys, where last time we did absolutely destroy the city of Carthage. If you've not seen that video, guys, go and check it out. But today, we are going to be going with the main consensus on the last video, which was to go north into the Savage Gauls. I can't wait for this one. First things first, though, guys, I did just do picking a side here, which meant I had to change a governor around, and then I can do Triumph of Macedon, finish those missions, and then we can go for Cisalpine Gaul. So first of all, let's go for land grants in Senonia, which is going to give Roman freemen that will settle in all owned Gallic territories in Ariminum, which is fantastic. And of course, we're going to gain claims on the province of Amilla, which should help us declaring war up here. Let's do that and let's gather our armies, boys. And I've just realized we do actually have the province of Amilla, guys. So, um... Uh, yeah, let's uh, maybe fabricate a claim here. So with our land grants in Senonia, we can go for an excellent initiative or we can encourage this as much as possible, bringing more Roman freemen and more conversion speed. So let's go for that one. It's only 97 gold. And there we go. We have settled Senonia. Fantastic. This allows us to go with Italic Feudatories. I don't know who this is that likes us, but apparently someone does over here. I don't know why. <laughs> um, and then let's found a Colonia and let's go for Parma because it's going to make a city and it's equal the uh, amount of pops. So now we have the option of making Veneto a feudatory. Let's try that. And they actually did become a feudatory. That is kind of strange. I was not expecting that. We are fabricating a claim on them as well. But uh, that will allow us to integrate these guys rather easily. And they are quite big, but it's not... Great. I'd kind of rather just conquer that land, really. <laughs> right then, guys, let's get into this war. We do have more troops on the way, but I don't think we'll need them right at the start. So let's get going. And into the Gauls, we march again, my friends. And let's take the blessing of Mars. Well, they are basically just running away from us at the moment. I don't think this is going to be uh, too difficult of a war because, yeah, they, they look like they're pretty scared. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> well, we've pretty much taken all of the forts that are of interest to us guys so yeah let's try and start fighting some battles here and let's see how we do against the gauls um <laughs> that's silly i'm surprised we didn't stack wipe them there but yeah that's pretty good isn't it <laughs> well they keep trying to fight back guys but it, yeah it's 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 really not a great fight back we've killed so many of their troops already um so yeah we're just going to keep on doing that well, here's another big battle 17,000 versus 13,000 and as you can see it's just no contest at the moment <laughs> and here we go another huge battle let's go look at that absolutely fantastic I don't know where they're going to run to now, but uh, they don't have many places to go, do they, anymore? And let's get cultural administration, guys. 10% political influence, popper simulation speed, and cultural integration speed. Although, of course, we're not uh, integrating any cultures at the moment, but that is a very nice technology. Well, guys, honestly, at this point, I think we're kind of done with Insubria, so let's see what we can get from them. So there we go. That's what we are going to take. Only 33 aggressive expansion. So nice. That should uh, accomplish quite a few goals over here. We'll Straight on to the next war with Liguria, my friends. Well, initially, we're going to leave all of the forts as they are and put everyone on conversion for now. Well, honestly, guys, I think it was a waste of time and money to get Veneto as a feudatory because, yeah, there's probably not much way we would have been able. We're on about minus 50 that we would have been able to integrate them anyway, even if they'd been happy with us. So, yeah, I'm going to cancel that and we will invade them. And let's invoke Devotio a few times, get that tyranny up so we're not going too high with our war exhaustion. These tiny little nations have managed to put together 11,000 mercenaries. Fair enough. Fair enough. But um, yeah, we've uh, we've defeated you. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> and doesn't that look fantastic? Awesome. Well, a big issue over here is we're having to fabricate so many claims because like all of these tiny little nations are all split up here, which yeah, it's quite it's quite annoying, but we'll get claims on them all. Let's take the Northern Latins over here, giving us another Colonia. And I think we'll go for Pisae because that gives us 10 
pops. Although six pops in Albium in Guanum, I think we'll do that because it builds a city. Also go for Gallia Cispadana over here. The Southern Padus Valley is completely under our control. We are one step closer to driving the Gauls back across the Alps and spreading the light of Roman civilization across all of Gaul. And then we get to build a fortress. So I'm just going to choose whichever I think is the best one. So let's go for Crixia. So let's go for Invade in Subria, which also gives us another city. So let's go for Mediolanum over here. And with all our money, guys, I'm going to be building more grand theatres across in Greece. One thing I have done, guys, is found a colony in Macedonia. Macedonian. That's going to allow us to assimilate Macedonian quite a bit quicker, and then we'll do it with Lepontic when we can as well. Right, boys, on to the next target, which is Veneto over here. So we're going to fight Veneto Istria, and I'm honestly just going to take all of the land if we can, so let's go. And unfortunately, the uh, Venetian Revolt has fired as well, which... <laughs> Uh, that's not what we needed right now. Truly, that is not what we needed. <laughs> and two more cities in Cisalpine Gaul. Fantastic. What a mess of a war this is going to be, guys. Honestly, things are going to be flipping between sides constantly, so... Uh, as soon as we sort this out, the better. <laughs> well, let's peace out Istria over here, taking this little bit of land. And honestly, guys, uh, this is just getting too messy right now. So I think I'm going to peace out the revolt first. So let's do that and just basically take everything that we can from them. Well, then I think we've just managed to put ourselves in a pretty good spot where we can take nearly everything else apart from this. I just need to jump on this for a second and then we'll stand near this. Hopefully then we can take everything from them, but let's see. And for some reason, they refuse to end the revolt by taking that. So, uh, I mean, part of it might be the reason I've got my two armies here, but... <laughs> Oh, let's let's just take everything that we can do then, guys. And the main thing now, guys, is that we will actually connect our land. Fantastic. Well, this is an interesting event. I don't think I've actually seen this before. The Rock of Ages. In a ramshackle farm on the outskirts of Baloya, a great depression in the ground mars the serene landscape. In the midst of this crater, a great immovable rock lies dormant. It is unlike anything our advisors have seen, and a scribe mentions a near-forgotten prophecy of a message sent to our people by Jupiter himself. Oh, pretty good. Within days, multiple to choose a people of flock to see this. Ah, well, that's pretty good because it gives us country, same religion, happiness, and morale of armies. I, I mean, can't, <laughs> can't be upset with that. Let's then go for Vanquish Veneti over here, and let's go for Altinion. Now we can do Cisalpine Settlers, guys, which will give us a load of settlers in Cisalpine Gaul. Fantastic. Well, I've just gone around making sure we've got the right governor policies on everywhere, and then we're going to clean up all of these little guys over here before we start getting into some other areas, maybe, on the map. And there we go, settling Cisalpine Gaul, guys. With the conquest of such a large area on the borders of Italia, many freemen are jumping at the chance to move into the vast and fertile Padus Valley to establish their own farms. Fantastic. 30 Roman freemen have moved to Cisalpine Gaul. That is going to be so helpful going forward. I don't think we need quite as many forts over in this area as well, so I've tried to clean them up somewhat once we've fully conquered this region, we can really clean them up. Right then, on to the final small enemy over here, guys. Let's smash them to pieces. Well, we're still going on about this rock found in Beloya. <laughs> so, in the years since our people located the Great Rock of the Heavens, the local ad administration in Beloya has created a shrine about the stone. Okay, our state of war, however, has convinced our chiefest advisors that the security of this divine messenger is at risk. And we must move it to Rome. Of course we must move it to Rome. So that gives us 20 stability for a little bit of war exhaustion and some manpower. I mean, that is amazing, honestly. And let's get our penultimate military tradition, guys. Let's go for it. And they've actually managed to muster like 23,000, 30,000 troops, guys. That's actually insane. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of them. Like, how have you guys managed to muster that many troops? I, I'm assuming a lot of it's mercenaries. But, uh... Yeah, you, you can't win against us. <laughs> and that's interesting. Pontus has declared war on us, surprisingly enough. Um, well, we have a lot of money, so I think we'll just fight this one with mercenaries. I also feel like we'll have better ships. So if we just sit here, we should be able to uh, stop them coming across. And they did manage to muster 22,000 troops here, Pontus, actually. So they have a lot of troops. Fair play to them. And let's have a look at this Pontic battle. Oh, my days. <laughs> They didn't have a leader in the battle. That is very strange. I don't know why they would do that, but okay. <laughs> well, I'm hoping now that we can peace out with everyone over here. The main thing is to take this. That is part of our mission. 
So, yeah, it's a bit of a harder war than I really did expect, but overall, that's fine. And they don't want to peace out yet. That's so strange. We've occupied all of your land, bro. But anyway, hopefully we can uh, stack wipe a few more of them and uh, they'll be ready to go. Surprisingly enough, Pontus has an, a serious amount of troops over here. So, um, yeah, we're just going to hire some more mercenaries. Where are you guys going? And then we're going to basically just gather them all up together. Well, there we go. We stack wiped all of the rest of the troops over here. So that should now be enough to take everything absolutely fantastic let's go and as you can see it's a lot of fort so uh, we'll clean that up as well <laughs> so let's now do gallia trespadana over here which gives a triumphal arch to rome which is integrated culture happiness um which is really good and we could go production or integration and of course we'll go for the integration as well let's now finish these missions off guys well i think we'll go for end the adriatic pirates over here i think that's going to be the best one for the time being something we can do while our aggressive expansion tends to tick down um and yeah we have to deal with all this <laughs> well this is certainly interesting i i've I feel fair enough to Pontus, honestly, for taking this opportunity. Let's see if they can get past this fort, though, first. And now we can discuss anti-pirate laws, which will allow us to, of course, get a few claims over here, hopefully. Right then, boys, let's get into the Pontics over here. Like I say, I'm not really bothered about taking anything off these guys. Like, this is such a mess at the moment, but... <laughs> like... I do want to fight them, though, and let's uh, fight them off. I mean, yeah, we might as well take some land, by the way. Well, here we go. Big battle on the way. Well, now they are starting to run, so I don't think that they are too confident in themselves. Let's have a look at this battle, then, and see how we do. We've got 139% discipline. We're using the wrong tactic, actually, with the mercenaries. Maybe we should go on triplex axes, especially for this mercenary. But, yeah, they are struggling, and we are thoroughly pushing them back now. Like, they are running scared. Like, look at that. Like, we are absolutely destroying them now so yeah i don't think there's anything we really need to be worried about anymore i think honestly guys it's in our interest to get out of this war i am going to take a little foothold though on anatolia now uh, which will allow us to walk straight across into anatolia when we want to so that is our first foothold over here in the east fantastic so now let's get rid of all of our levies that are raised now with our money we are going to look north into these recently conquered lands and there start building some of our our grand theatres and some of our grand uh, great temples to try and convert this populace over to uh, more Roman ideas. So now we can take rooting out pirate skies, which gives us national commerce income 10% for 360 months. I mean, that's pretty nice. Well, guys, here we are. We are going to start cleaning up a load of this area here as well. I'm not too bothered about the aggressive expansion. That's going to be fine. So uh, we're just going to use mercenaries for these walls. We don't need to waste any more of our levies on this at all. One thing we are definitely struggling with is influence at the moment. So we're going to go for town criers. And I might even go all the way down here to try and get patrocinium. I mean, it's a lot of text, but <laughs> we do we do have a lot of research efficiency right now. Well, there we go. This war is nicely wrapped up. And that allows us to do Delmation Coast, which gives us 500 gold, which is pretty good to start with, and a Colonia. And let's see which one. They're all founding cities. So let's go for Delmium. On to the next war, guys. And that was done in about a week. So uh, great. <laughs> We can now get the Liburnian coast as well, which gives us another Colonia. We can go for Ayada. I would prefer ones that do found cities, though, over here, honestly. So let's go for Tarsatica. And while we're getting ready for some wars in the north, guys, I am going to start building a road all the way from the southern tip of Greece all the way around here just to give us a little bit better movement and that's the venetian revolt dealt with again there we go and that allows us to do subdue the score disky over here which gives us another colonia and of course we are going to be founding a city so let's go for dasminium and now we can get into the north my friends fighting these boys over here so let's go and the final Roman tradition is done. Fantastic. Well, there we are. We just basically fought a one battle this whole war just there. Um, and these guys are at war, so we can't take everything. But we only need up to about here, guys. So that's what we're going to take. And yeah, if we take a little bit more than is actually the Roman Empire borders, guys. I, I mean, what can you do? taking more land <laughs> that's fine. And there we go. It is 34 aggressive expansion, which isn't great, but... Um, 
Yeah, we're going to take a tech that gives us less aggressive expansion, hopefully soon. And that allows us to do Pannonia Inferioris over here. So another Colonia. And once again, it's going to be a city formation. So uh, let's go for a Quincum, I think. And look at that right now, boys. We are <laughs> nice and juicy on the map now, aren't we? Look at that. That is absolutely beautiful. Now, the final war in Illyria, guys. We are going to fight these boys. Let's go. There should be another nice and easy one. I just noticed, like, look at all this land they have up here and how split out it is. So I'm assuming these guys were a migratory tribe, but <laughs> yes. that's kind of horrible. I kind of like this nice clean border we've got here. <laughs> and they'll already accept peace, so... um. There's no need to stay in this war any longer. We do have one issue. We cannot do this next mission without being able to colonize across here. So this is going to be interesting. It means that we have to get a few pops over this way as quick as possible. And now we have taken pretty much all of Illyria and Cisalpine Gaul, guys. We are going to chill out for a little while. I'm going to do some buildings. I'm going to be building cities in this area once we've got our political influence up. We're going to be continuing building some of our grand theatres in Greece. And then once we've built cities in at least one city in every single province uh, in this region, ideally... We can then build the grand theatres and uh, grand temples in there as well. So we've now built great temples and grand theatres across all of Cisalpine Gaul now in all the cities that it do exist. As we go on into the campaign, guys, I am going to found cities in all of the places, like I said before, that do not have a city in them and use them to convert the population. Like, for example, we have one here now. Now, it's not the most efficient thing in the world, but by doing that, hopefully... We can colonize. Oh, no. Insubria has colonized over here. Oh, that is interesting. Like, all we need is that. So, uh, yeah, let's go to war with them. Oh, my governors just keep dying in Greece, forcing me to change the governor policies all of the time. <laughs> Come on. And they all just want to take as much money as they can from this place. <laughs> I know it's rich, guys. I know it's rich. But stop being so greedy, will you, please? <laughs> well, let's go to war with Insubria. We're not going to take too much, but we will take a little bit of land in this one. Oh, and this is actually a larger war than I thought. But honestly, guys, uh, we just want to take this little piece of land here. That's all. So... I'm not too bothered about dragging this out too long. Well then, guys, let's get out of this war. We're literally just going to take up to the edge of the Alps. I mean, I could take more maybe, but uh, I don't think it's worth it. We just want this piece of land for our missions, and that's it. We can actually get Greek kingdom traditions now. So let's go down Veterans of the Great Campaign to go towards this found city cost modifier that uh, is pretty good, plus spearmen and heavy infantry as well. Let's now complete Pannonia Superioris over here and let's see which one's going to be the best i mean none of them are particularly good so carnuntum that sounds good and let's go rebellious populace this might of course create a war but uh yeah no we, we are not going to accept them becoming a tribal vassal man will my governors stop dying that is the question i mean a lot of them are quite old that is the only problem so we're going to go for some younger ones for now well there we go the illyrians now have declared war i did get some mercenaries in readiness but yeah they're, <laughs> they're inside that they're inside the land so we need to stop building roads and we need to go and kill them we can do of course triumph over savage lands though as well which is this region will make a fine addition to the lands of the Romans. Fantastic. Let's finish off this mission. And we have basically secured, apart from just ignore Illyria there, <laughs> but we basically secured our borders against the barbarians at the gates, haven't we? Fantastic, guys. And of course, guys, remember to comment down below which one you think is best. And make sure you do like and subscribe on this video if you do enjoy it, guys. My preference would be to go for Punic Rivals. I think that's going to be a really fun one to do next time. And I forgot that this was a war where basically once you take the land, it flips. So yeah, that is going to be very annoying to deal with. But basically what I have done is set these guys up as independent operations. So hopefully the micro shouldn't be too bad for taking back this land. But uh, let's see. Oh, and I forgot how annoying these wars are. <laughs> so annoying. And it's going it's to take us ages to stack wipe these guys. Like, I don't think we're going to stack wipe them in this first battle. But uh, let's see if we can at least catch them. Come on, please. Well, here we go. Please bring this army in so we can stack wipe them. Let me... Oh, oh we did stack wipe them. Oh, God. That is good. That that really, really does help. 
And I don't think they have any troops left, which is amazing. And having all of these guys set on Carpet Siege has really, like, mopped them up so quickly. So uh, that is very, very good. And literally, just as I say that, they, they raise more troops. I mean, it's not many. They're just, they're just annoying to deal with. <laughs> well, I think that is the last one, guys. There we go. That was actually a lot quicker than I expected. So uh, nice. Now with the political influence and lots of money that we have uh, saved up, we are going to be doing a lot of building in this area, founding cities in all of the places that don't have them, and building the requisite buildings. And another governor of Greece is dead. Great. Uh, we've got to reset everything again. <laughs> so guys, here we are a few years later. We are now at 148 BC as well. I've built a few cities around this region, although a lot of them are still quite disloyal. So there's no point building cities in them because we couldn't be building anything Anyway, I've saved up a load of money, guys, because we are, of course, going to build a legion next time. I want you guys to let me know what you think is the best layout for a legion. I would normally go with many heavy infantry and many heavy cavalry, plus, obviously, supply, and then quite a few engineers for that siege ability as well. But I want to hear your thoughts on that as well. And second of all, we did get a horrible event chain that was to try and get someone elected as the consul. And it basically meant we just got constant uh, tyranny. So if you guys have any thoughts for bringing down tyranny a little bit quicker, that would be fantastic as well. I hope you have enjoyed this video, guys. We have successfully smashed back the borders and taken out all the barbarians on them, which is fantastic. Let me know which one you think we should do next. I think Carthage would be rather fun. But anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. Please do like and subscribe. It really does help the channel out. And I will see you all again on the next video.